Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been working on the math problems. We started our series yesterday. Today is our day number two. We began the series yesterday, as I said. We're going to work through all the math problems that you'll find in this book. If you do not own this book, by the way, purchase one immediately. You are going to need it. There is no such thing as preparation for HESI. With this book in your hand, it is the Bible of the exam. Third edition, assessment admission exam review. As I said, you don't have it, purchase one immediately. We are right now on page number three. We are working through the sample problems. Problem number one is what we're going to do right now on page number three. Dealing with the basic addition and subtraction. Page three. Sample problems that you see on the bottom of the page there, page number three. At the very bottom of the page, if you look, is a sample problems. Number one. All of them dealing with obviously, all of them dealing with some addition and subtraction. Simple addition and subtraction. The very first one, 1803 plus 156. Let's see what we can do. Plus 156. Even before we do any work, you should be able to tell immediately that 1800 plus 150 is going to be about 1950. It's very simple. 3 plus 6 is 9. 0 plus 5 is 5. And then 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9, 1959 is the answer. Number 2, 835 plus 145. Again, in the exam, because it is a multiple choice exam that you'll be taking, you don't actually have to do out every single problem. If you can, if you can figure out, if you can estimate very quickly, Great. For example, here is 800 something and this is 150 something. 800 plus 100 is 900. And then this change here, 35 and 45, that's probably another close to a little, bit, little close to 100. So 900 plus 100 is going to be around 1000. Not quite 1000, but a little less than 1000. And this is how we write it. The answer is going to be 1000, but a little less than that. Because we are overestimating. This is not 850 and this is not 150. It's going to be under, under 1000, something close to 1000. Let's see what it is. 5 plus 5 is 10, that's a 0, carry 1. Whatever it is that you're carrying, put it on the top. Don't try to remember it. 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, and finally 8 plus 1 is 9. There you go, you see? Something close to a 1,000. Number 3. Number 3. 1,372 plus 139. Plus 139. 2 plus 9 is 11. 1, carry 1. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. 1, carry 1. 3 plus 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. About 1500. Which makes sense because this was, this top number was around 1400. The bottom number was about 100. The, the top number was around 1400 and the bottom number was around 100 so it stands to reason that the correct answer should be something close to 1500 let's go on to the next page, page number 4 page 4 problem number 4 just give me a second problem number 4 on the following page. We have three numbers that we are being asked to add 123, 54, and 23. Again, learn to approximate. You don't actually have to do all the work as I said before. Learn to approximate. It will take you a long ways. For example, this is this figure that you see there is approximately 125, this figure that we see is approximately 50, and this figure is another 25. 25 plus 25 is 50, 50 plus 50 is 100, so it's going to be around 200. The answer is going to be around 200. It's going to be around 200. Let's find out, shall we? 
3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 0, carry 1. It turns out that it's going to be exactly 200, so 0 here. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10, that's another 0, carry 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. The answer is exactly 200, not around 200, but that's it. You find one answer choice, a multiple choice exam, out of the four answer choices that they give you, only one is going to be something that is going to be close to 200. And pick one, that's it. Let's do number five. 673. Oh, this is a subtraction problem now. Prob beginning with problem number five, we are dealing with subtraction, no longer addition. Minus 241. Again, before we do any work at all, around 600, uh, uh, around 700, this is around 700, and this is around 250, right? 700 minus 200 would have been 500, but since we have 250, it's going to be around 450. The answer is going to be around 450. So if you find one answer choice that is close to 450 in the, among, the, um, among the answer choices, that's your answer. You don't actually do it out everything. 3 plus 1 is, well not 3 plus 1, this is a minus, right here, there's a minus sign here. 3 minus 1 is 2, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 6 minus 2 is 4. There you go, 432, which is what we said, around 450. Let's do the next one, number 7, a number 6 rather. Six tells us five hundred and forty seven five hundred and forty seven minus eighty eight five hundred and forty seven minus eighty eight again what do you suppose the answer should be approximately well it's this 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 top guy is around five fifty the bottom guy is around one hundred and we're subtracting it so obviously it's gotta be around four fifty somewhere around four fifty let's find out shall we it's a tricky one because we are we are being asked to subtract 8 from a 7. 7 is too tiny. 7 cannot take on 8 by himself. So what does it do? He goes to his neighbor. Okay, listen carefully. This is going to get a little tricky here. So pay attention. He goes to his neighbor and he says, well, you got four tens here. You, 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 have, you have four tens. Why don't, you, why don't you lend me one? Why don't you let me one? You got four of them. He says, sure, I'll give you one. So he gives one ten to guys and he becomes three. Cross it, cross it out and immediately put down three. He gives the 10 to this guy and it becomes 17. 17 minus 7, listen carefully, 17 minus 7 would have been 10. Would have been 10, it's hypothetical. We don't have 7 here, we have 8. Therefore 17 minus 7 would have been 10. Therefore 17 minus 8 should be 9. Now we have to subtract 8 from a 3. No, we can't subtract 8 from a 3. So he does the same thing that the previous guy did. He goes to this guy, he goes to his neighbor here. This guy is a hundred digits. It's a hundreds digit and it tells us that he has five one hundreds. That's why it's called five hundred probably. He has five one hundreds, so this this guy goes to him and says, Listen, you got five of them. Why don't you just uh, lend me one? You can you can spare one. He says, Sure, I'll give you one hundred. I'll give you one hundred. I got I, I got five of them. I'll give you one. He he, he gives one hundred to him and he becomes four hundred. And, but don't think in terms of hundred. Just think of it as a one is one conjoining a three, because otherwise it'll become complicated. What is technically, what is technically happening is that a hundred from com is coming here and joining this thirty. It is one hundred and thirty minus eighty. That's what it is. This is ten digits. But don't think in those things. Just keep it simple. One he borrows one. It becomes thirteen. Thirteen minus eight is thirteen minus eight is five. Four hundred and fifty nine because four just comes down. Four hundred and fifty nine is the exact answer and we already established that the correct answer should be around 450 and that's exactly what we found here. Number seven. Number seven. Two hundred and twenty two minus one hundred and fourteen. Well it should be around one hundred. The answer should be around one hundred. Two hundred minus a hundred is about a hundred. 2 minus 4, we cannot subtract 4 from a 2, so what does it do? He goes to this guy and borrows 1. 2 is going to become 1, and 1 comes and joins this guy becomes 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. This is 1 now, it used to be 2 because he, he lent 1 to this guy, so it became 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. 
and then 2 minus 1 is 0. That was pretty straightforward. As we said, the answer was going to be around 100, which is exactly what we found here. Let's do the next one, number 8. Number 8 tells us that we have 12,478. 12,478 minus 467. Again, as I keep reminding you, like a parrot, I keep repeating that in real exam, in the real exam, the answer choices that are going to be given to you, just give me one second, I'll tell you exactly uh, what sort of animal we're dealing with here. I should have known, but just give me one brief second. The practice exam I'm looking at here, they appear at the very end of the, end, very end of the book. And we will do practice, pra practice exam as well towards the end. And if you turn to page number 127, this is where the practice exam is. If you turn to page number 127, that's where the exam is. And you will see that the nature of the beast is such that they give you four answer choices and they are all pretty far apart for the most part. In most cases, in vast majority of the cases, the answer choices can be very far apart. For example, if you look at question number 15 on page 128, turn to page 128 and look at number 15. As you can see, the answer choices are 30, 10, 100, and 1000. They are too far apart. You don't have to actually do anything out here. It's just 12,500. This is approximately 500. The top number is around 12,500 and the bottom number is around 500. Pick the answer choice. Had it been a real exam, had it been a real exam, it would be a damn silly thing to do here to sit here and waste your time, precious second, to actually do out the bloody thing. It's going to be around 1,200. Pick an answer choice that is, that is closest to 12,000, not 1,200 rather. Pick an answer choice that is closest to 12,000 and that's all there is. That's all there is. Let's do it out. 8 minus 7 is 1. 7 minus 6 is 1. 4 minus 4 is 0. There we go. 12,011. The answer is 12,011. But that was not necessary. That was a sheer waste of time. In the real exam, one doesn't need to do it out. One simply has to be able to recognize what the right answer is by simply estimating. It will take you a long ways. Where are we right now? We are on penultimate problem. Problem number nine, we are on penultimate problem. I do not have my vocabulary. Oh, actually, I do have my vocabulary list with me here. In the event that you're interested in working on your vocabulary, in the event that you're interested in improving your vocabulary, penultimate is simply a very fancy way of saying second to the last. We are on problem number nine, that is second to the last problem. It is the penultimate problem. We learned this vocabulary word. On day 11. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, as I said, just type in vocabulary words, day 11, and the video will pop right up. Problem 9. Or HESI vocabulary words, if you like. Number 9. It says we went 5 miles west. We went 5 miles west. And then and then 8 miles north. Well, if you travel 5 miles west, here's your, here's your west, east, north, and south. We went 5 miles west, and then we went 8 miles north. The question simply is, how much total distance did you travel? Total distance is this plus this. They're not looking for the distance from this point to that point. They're not looking for the distance from the beginning of the journey to the end, the direct route. They're not looking for the direct route. They're looking for the total number of the miles I traveled. Now I went 5 miles west and 8 miles north. What well, is a total of 13 miles? It's a total of 13 miles. Quite simple, quite straightforward. Let's do the very last one. We picked 26 tomatoes. We have picked 26 tomatoes and we are told that we are going to give away 7 of them.
again you can make it technical and you can make it a little bit more nerdy geeky academic classical way traditional way orthodox way or you can keep it very simple say to yourself just understand that 26 26 minus 6 26 minus 6 would have been 20 we're not subtracting 6 we're subtracting 7 we're subtracting one more than that so instead of 20 it's going to be 19 let's do it out shall we as you can see, we cannot subtract six, 7 from a 6. We cannot subtract 7 from a 6. So the 6 goes to this guy and says, can I borrow 1? He says, sure, you can borrow 10. I have 2 of them. Why don't you have 1? So that 10 goes and joins the 6 here and becomes 16. 16 minus 7. 16 minus 6 would have been 10. 16 minus 7 is going to be 9. And a 1. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.